Uh, I'm great. How you doing? Good, thanks. We, we've sh- I, I coordinate the Gay and Lesbian Film Festival in Atlanta, so we've shown plenty of your films over the years. So anyway, um, thank you for that. I was. I think my one of my first screenings in my life of a film was at the High Museum. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure it was the LGBT. I think there was a, there's another Atlanta festival. There's the Atlanta Film Festival. Was exactly. What what was the film? What was the film that screened at the high? Do you remember? Uh it was probably the Delta. It was Ann Hubble was the programmer. Yeah. I don't know if you know Ann. Down, down. <laughs> I remember Ann, Ann yeah. Ann, Ann was um, yeah, we had Ann down for um a screening of whatever films a long time but anyway let's uh, i enjoyed passages thanks so much for uh, talking to me today how did this project come up for you um you know i wanted to make a film of pleasure um and i wanted to make a film of intimacy yeah i think during the pandemic particularly i felt a lack of both yeah. and um so i i i focused on a love triangle because i felt um like the stakes were raised in that situation in a way that made for pure cinema. Yeah. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about Tomas and Martin and sort of where they are in their relationship as the film opens? Oh, I don't think they're in a very good spot. <laughs> in, a, in a way, it's a film um, that starts at the bottom and goes down from there. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, they're at a point where everything's stuck and everything's broken, but there's still this passion for each other. Yeah. And 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 so um, it nothing. There's an there's an inability to achieve resolution, and that's what kind of keeps the film hopping. Okay. Um, obviously, things get more complicated when a get comes into the picture. Can you talk a little, a little bit about the interest of that character and how you know, and sort of more about that love triangle? Yeah. Um, you know, for me, when I wrote the film, I thought that it would be a film about sexual identity and and a change in in one's um label but the film that we made is from a, um is is much more contemporary than that and i think partially that's because the three actors and the three characters are of a different generation where the labels don't work mm-hmm. so um uh you know things are changing um for tomas but but gender doesn't seem to, to be the central reason why i think it's um it's it's a different kind of lust. Can you talk about um, studying the film in Paris? Um, yeah, I uh, I first lived in Paris in, in, in the mid 1980s. It's a city that I've had relationships in, I've had breakups in, I've had sex in, uh, I've cried in Paris. Um, so it's a city that I feel very comfortable and intimate with. Um, it's also a great city, city of of movies. And so the possibility of making a film there seemed like a, a certain kind of uh, aesthetic liberation because I could really play with with um, my love of French cinema in making this movie. Yeah. Can you can you talk a little bit about the three central actors? I mean, and, and, and why they're appropriate because they're, they're all so good, and, and you know, they're you know, th- these characters are so complex. So, can you sort of talk about what each of, each of these three bring to the roles? Yes, I mean, I think of um, Ben. I think of Tomas as an animal, Ben as a knife, and Adele as a goddess. Yeah, and and they're each magnetic in very different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they're they're to me um, you know they're playing everyday people they they could be like you and I but they're actually individually movie stars so they create a different kind of effect on the audience um, I, I think of the film is is like um, part of the pleasure is the kind of iconic quality of their performances they they take on resonance and 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 are almost monumental in the way that they hold space as actors had you had you ever met or worked with ben uh we met on instagram messenger and we we probably um you know we exchanged we, you know as as two gay men interested in, in film and the arts we exchanged um, certain ideas and certain um, interests between us, and then the movie came along, and 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 I took 
the opportunity to to send the script to him and he responded very quickly when i think about your films you know i always think about the characters and how fleshed out they are how, how character driven you know can, can you sort of talk about you know that and, and writing and why it's so important to you to really have three-dimensional characters well you know i feel like my education was in cinema but also in the novel and and um, what i look for in a novel is a depth that makes um the flat become round mm -hmm. uh there, there's a way in which layer upon layer upon, upon layer is what connects me to art and literature and, and film. Yeah. And so I'm always trying to create cinema, um, uh, stories that are filled with contradictions and also with a certain amount of emotional suspense. The question of what, what, will, what will he or she do next is, is paramount in every scene. Mm -hmm. I, I consider this film an action film. Okay. Um, if, if if you wanted to get if I if I had to be asked a genre, it would be action because it's a, about the ways in which bodies um, uh, impact each other and potentially combust. Okay. I, I read an interview this morning, and I can't remember if this was a quote from you or what some a reporter said, but I, I took away uh, the phrase "sex tells what dialogue can." Can you oh. talk about that? If it was my quote, it's not a bad one. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I think one thing that's interesting to me is there's three central sex scenes in the film and each one is, tells its own story. Mm -hmm. And I can't do that. It's really the actors who take the opportunity and with um, a sense of trust, tell us, the audience, a story about lust and passion. Um, they're the ones who create the periods, the commas and the exclamation points. And it's really, um, when you watch those scenes, it's really uh, extraordinary level of performance, um, yeah. both physically, but also as storytellers, really. Like making sex interesting is not easy. Yeah, I, I saw the film from my computer at Sundance and then I saw it again at Berlin. And obviously, okay. you know, it's a great film, but you know, people do talk about the sex scene between Franz and Ben, um, which is, very very hot but but also it, it's very as you said i mean there's you can, there's just so much going on there the, the intimacy the, the the level of you know you, you can just tell so much about the characters and they love each other in that scene that i mean how difficult was it you know to to sort of navigate that scene and sort of plot, map out what all you wanted to do with it my favorite part of that scene is that franz is the soles of his feet are so dirty <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, you know, when you set up, uh, the, uh, a scene like that, you, you kind of have to pray yeah, because the possibility of nothing happening is also, uh, really present yeah. um, and in a way it's the actors who make something happen. I felt that very much and keep the lights on as well. Yeah. It's kind of a gift of the actors to share so much of themselves in in those scenes, yeah. and and if like literally if it didn't work, then then I wouldn't have a scene. I would I it, it wouldn't I, the movie would proceed without the scene if yeah. the actors didn't make it good. Exactly. Um, speaking of absurdities, can you talk about the NC seventeen Ray? Yeah, um, you know, for me, it's what's what's. Um, it, it, it less affects me as a filmmaker because I made a very free film and I was supported both by my producer and Mubi, my distributor, to do so. Um, what I uh, find alarming is um, the warning shot a rating like that gives to other filmmakers and particularly queer ones about what kind of images will be allowed and what kind of images will be punished. So it's chilling. You can behead somebody and you get a PG-13 and, and two characters in a relationship can make love, it's NC-17. That is, it's just, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. We, we also should question, less question why the film gets an NC-17 and more question why the MPAA still exists. Why is this censorship allowed by the industry and by the culture and by us as an audience. Yeah, yeah. Can you, 
I mean, I, I followed your work for for so long, and it, it, it's. I, mean, I appreciate that. Such, That's meaningful. To me. Such iconic films, but can you talk a little bit about the importance of being an out director, making, telling LGBTQ stories? Yeah, you know, I don't think of my films as political, but I think the act of making, um, make telling these stories is in this culture a form of resistance. Yeah. Um, and what's most meaningful to me, the other day I met a journalist who told me that through my films, he saw his own life in a new way okay. because he, he had never seen um, depictions of very simple things that he knew personally, but didn't exist in front of him. And, and so in some ways, I think the films are a conversation with other gay people about our lives. Okay. Right. So what are you working on next? I'm shooting a film in November with Ben Wishaw um, called Peter Hujar's Day. Nice. Um, that's about uh, an afternoon in New York in December 1974 and a conversation between the photographer Peter Hujar and his friend Linda. Great. Well, congratulations. Congratulations Thank you. on this film as well. Iris, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks, Jim. Have a good after morning. Thanks so much.